Welcome to story problem time. We're still doing board feet, but sometimes it's not given to you in a drawing. Sometimes it's simple, simple word problems that we need to work out. However, the technique is the same. It's still a plug it in and chug out the answer question. You just gotta know where to put the numbers. So here's a simple one. I purchased five boards that measure one and a half thick, six and a half wide, 92 long. Calculate how many board feet that is. Very straightforward question. In our formula up here, I'm looking for four numbers. So let's see if we can track down those four numbers. And remember, because they're all being multiplied together, it doesn't matter what order they're in. But let's logically go through it at least and fill it out. So we have our equal sign, board feet equals. I need thickness first. Well, we just go down and it says one and a half thick. It's even labeled for me, 1.5. Uh, I need my width, six and a half wide. There it is. I need my length, you keep reading, and 92 inches long. And then how many pieces? That's right in the beginning, five boards. And divide all that by 144 and chug out the number. And the answer I get is 31.15 board feet. And that would be my answer for that question. Now, in future questions, they'll ask, give me a value, give me a total money. Now we can't do that in this one because I have no idea what kind of wood this is, what it's worth per foot. But if I simply take the exact same question and just put in, it's made of oak, that is $2.20 per foot, that changes things. Now while this number doesn't end up in my equation up here, now I take it, take my answer and multiply that by 2.2 and get a, a total amount for this, these boards. And the total amount I'm getting is $68.50. Cents. And that would be my final answer for that. So keep track of exactly what the question is asking, whether it's board feet or it's a value or it's money. So you know where to go and to take that last step to get it. Our next word problem, our story problem. I need 30 railroad ties for my garden project. If they all measure Six and a half inches by eight inches by eight feet long, calculate the board feet. Now again, in this one, I don't have a wood, a uh, board foot total for what it's made of. We're gonna worry about that another time. So for now, let's go through this. So this time I didn't say what's width, what's length, what's, you know, it doesn't, it's not in there. But again, it doesn't matter. Let's just plug in the numbers and see what we get. So equals thickness. Let's say it's the first number, Six point. Five. Width, let's say it's the second number, by eight. My length, let's say it's the third number, eight. And then number of pieces is right in the beginning, is 30. I'm gonna divide that by 144. So that was pretty simple. We have our four numbers, we plug them in, and let's go ahead and figure this out. My calculator is coming up with 86. 0.67 board feet. Okay, now that's great. The problem is that this number is incorrect. Now I did go through the proper procedures in calculating and putting in the right numbers. That's not the problem. There is an error on here that I need to need you to notice. That is right here. This was given in feet, not inches. And there is a big problem with that. Just so you know, this mark right here, this, this hash mark, if you will, this quotation, that designates inches. A single, single quote mark, you know, there's only one little line there, this designates feet. Now on tests and so forth, I'll generally write the word feet so it brings your attention to it. But know that if it's written like this, it's inches. If it's written like this, that's feet. Now, how does that change everything? Well, eight feet is how many inches? How do you get that? Well, you gotta multiply eight times 12 to get your inches, so all the units are the same. If I don't have that 12 in there, then this is 12 times you know, the wrong size. It's 12 times smaller than it actually should be. So what do we do when we have feet? 
You know, if it was 11 and a half feet, I may not be able to figure that out on top of my head. So how do I get it? All you have to do, let's go ahead and erase what we've done here, is throw in a times 12. So it's 12 times eight. Again, because I'm multiplying all the numbers together, it doesn't matter the order. So I need six and a half times eight times eight times 12, that would give me whatever that number of inches are, and then times the 30. So I still have those four numbers, or if you're just throwing in a times 12 into your equation, that's five numbers, that's fine. These two would be considered one number, my length. Now let's go through in your calculator and figure it out, and you'll see the difference. Now I have a number, it is 1,040.0, exactly. Our first number was 86 and some number. You can see the major difference that that is going to make, especially in the price when you come up with that next. Let's read through it. The table I'm making requires 32 board feet of maple to complete it. If maple is $3.25 a foot, what will I spend total? Now in this case, this equation is meaningless the reason is because I have no measurements. There's nothing to plug in. Besides, this equation is giving me board feet. I have my board feet, it's right there. 32 board feet, I'm done. 32 board feet is the answer to this equation. Now you're skipping to the second step. So a good way to remember this is, in, if any of my questions, I only give you two numbers and that's it, just these two, you either are going to multiply them together or divide them. It just depends on how the question is asked. In this case, it's exactly what we've done a number of times already. I have my board feet. I know the price per foot. I have my units and price per unit. All I do is I multiply them together to get a total. I want to know how much will I spend total. So we simply have 32 times 3.25 per foot. And the answer I get is $104 and no cents. So remember, if I'm not giving you a measurement, a bunch of measurements, those four that we're always looking for, then this equation doesn't do anything. We need to skip it and move on to the other one, which is units times the price per unit gives me a total. All right, guys, for this one, I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curve at you. Let's read through the question. I walk into a store with $300 uh, for lumber. If I am buying as much, as much cherry as I can get, and right here it says cherry is $3.75 a foot, how many board feet can I buy? So I walk into a lumber yard with 300 bucks. It is 375 per foot. How many board feet can I get? This is very, very common when you're going to buy lumber. You already have a limit on how much you can spend so how many can you get? We cannot use our equation up here like we always do because there's no measurements. We're gonna use our second equation. So let's come over here and plug this in. So I'm going to do this algebraically. Let's write out that formula so we know where to plug everything in. We're looking for total money is equal to the units times the price per unit. So in our case, our units are board feet times the price per Foot. Okay, that's our second equation, if you will. So if we don't use this, we're using this. So let's plug in the information. Our total normally is what we're looking for. But in this case, we know our total is already $300. I cannot spend any more than that. That's what we're gonna spend. And I said here, I'm gonna buy as much as I can. Great. So we put that in as 300 is equal to the board feet, which is what we're looking for. That's our variable. We'll just put BF, if you will, times the price per foot, which is written right here as well, 3.75. 3.75 right there. Now, we have our equation. What do we do? In this case, for all of you algebra experts, we need to get our variable alone. We need to move this to the other side of the equal sign. So go with me on this. To do that, we divide this by 3.75. That will cross out. That divided by itself is one, anything times one is itself, and so forth. 
But whatever we do to the right, we have to do to the left of the equal sign. We divide that by 3.75. Now I can take my calculator and actually work this out. And when I do 300 divided by 3.75, I get 80. So board feet is equal to 80 what? Board feet. That's the unit. That's what we're looking for. So I can walk out of the store with 80 board feet of lumber, and that will use up all of my $300, assuming no tax and so forth. But for this question, with only two variables, you're going to either multiply them or you're going to divide them. You need to read it carefully so you'll remember which is which so you get the right answer. Are you ready for another curve? This question deals with plywood. So let's go through it. If I have five sheets of standard plywood, how much will it cost if it is $1.75 per foot? Okay. First, we don't have any measurements. Okay, so we're not going to use this again. Fine. However, how big is a standard sheet of plywood? Now this is the one thing that I'm going to need you to just memorize. You're going to need to know it. A standard sheet of plywood is four feet wide and eight feet long. Now we need that in square feet. We're always dealing with square feet, board feet, and all that stuff. Four times eight is 32. So if you need to do it on a calculator, that's fine. But an easy way to, to keep it in your mind is if I say plywood, you need to just think 32 square feet. Plywood, 32 square feet because I'm rarely going to tell you how big a sheet of plywood is because it's so standardized. But now I have that, uh, that number that I need. I have 32 square feet in a sheet of plywood times five sheets. So we need to know how many square feet total we've got. So again, we're back to that second equation. Units times price per unit. 32 square feet per sheet times five sheets will give me my units, my volume. So 32 times 5, giving my units times the price per unit, because I'm looking for a cost. How much will it cost? Give me a total cost. That's my normal units times price per unit times $1.75. So I know there's three numbers here, but this is counted as one number, if you will, so I can get my units. So let's go ahead and erase that so it doesn't look like we're dividing anything, and then figure it out on your calculator. And the answer I get with all those numbers multiplied together is 280. So that is it. I have five sheets of plywood at this much per foot. Do a simple math problem and I can tell you it'll be $280 for all five sheets of wood. For our very last problem, let's read through it. I'm making 20 Christmas ornaments that are quarter inch thick, three inches wide, and three and a half inches long. If walnut is $4.50 per foot, what is my total cost? First, this is a straight plug and chug kind of question. It plugs right into our equation that we've been using most of this whole time, and it will chug out an answer. So I've got all my measurements on there. I know my price per foot. Great. Other things to notice, that's inches, this is inches, and this one's inches. So I don't have to convert any inches or any feet back into inches by throwing in a times 12. So that's good. But the other, only other thing that I wanted to make sure you noticed is as we read the question, what kind of a number am I gonna come up with? A very large one or a very small one or somewhere in between? So let's go through this. We're talking about 20 pieces that are a quarter inch thick. It's this thick, not even the thickness of my pinky. Three inches wide, three and a half inches long. So a Christmas ornament about this big, 20 of them. So you can expect that our answers are going to be very small. So as we go through, it's not surprising. So some people, when they come upon these, they plug in all the numbers and they get such a small answer, they assume their answer is wrong. Don't worry about that. We're assuming, or well, we know ahead of time that the answers are going to be small. So let's plug it in. Our four numbers, thickness, we have one fourth, that's 0.25. Our width is three, our length is three and a half, 3.5, our number of pieces is 20, and divide all that by 144. Go through and get an answer on your calculator, and the answer I get is 0.36. 
And for whatever reason, some people just kind of freak out about that. It's like, that's too small. That's not even one board foot. Correct. Because everything is so thin and so small, 20 of them is barely a third of a foot. That's fine. The numbers are correct. So now we just do our normal, multiply that by 4.5 times $4.50 a foot. I still have it in my calculator times 4.5 gives me a total of $1.64 for the wood to make those ornaments. So make sure as you're going, you're looking at the units and you're starting to formulate in your own mind, am I expecting a very large number or a small one or is this one gonna be bigger than the next one and so forth. It will help you accept uh, ahead of time if it's big or small or if your answer is gonna be correct as you get through it. If I ended up with 10 or $20, something would have been wrong and my mind would have caught that. So redo your numbers till it's correct. Hopefully all these questions, these examples will help you answer all the questions that are going to be on your later assessment. So best of luck in answering these questions and getting the right answer.